Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So in today's video, we're going to go into detail about the different color mutations of chinchilla. If you're thinking of getting a chinchilla, if you already have a chinchilla or you're just curious, then this video is going to definitely help you understand how mutations in chinchillas work. Before we start, if you have a chinchilla, let me know in the comments down below what color it is. Okay, now let's get straight into the video. So the first color is standard gray, the most common color of a chinchilla. Now the standard gray is not considered a mutation because this is the color that most wild chinchillas are. These chinchillas have strong fur qualities and are usually seen as the base color. The standard greys have a white belly and the coat is usually a blue grey in colour. However, individual hairs have different colours, usually with tips ranging from dark grey to dark blue to jet black. This makes them seem darkest along the top, then fading to a lighter grey along the sides and eventually to a white belly. Okay, next we're going to move on to the heterozygous beige chinchilla, which can be also called the hetero beige. So if you have a bit of knowledge about genes, you might know that within the karyotype, there are two different versions of the same gene. Basically, there are two genes that determine the color of a chinchilla, and the dominant gene determines which color the chinchilla is, and can also be called the phenotype. But the recessive gene is still present, but just not visible to the human eye. So the beige is a dominant mutation which means that the chinchilla only needs one beige gene in order to override the standard genes and become beige in colour. The body of a hetero beige chinchilla is beige with a white belly and ruby coloured eyes. As they age, freckling on the ears and nose is likely to appear. So my chinchilla Pandora, she's a hetero beige and she's absolutely adorable. And the next colour is homozygous beige, aka homo beige. The homo beige chinchilla has two beige genes which intensifies the effect of the beige mutation. The homo beige is similar in appearance to the hetero beige, except the colour of the coat is a lighter beige and creamier looking. The eyes are also a lighter ruby colour to jelly bean pink colour. The belly is also white like the hetero beige. After that, we have the white chinchillas. Now, within the whites, we can have mosaic, silver, extreme mosaic, pink white, and so on. The white mutation is an incomplete dominant mutation. This means that a chinchilla with a white gene will appear mostly white because white is dominant over the standard color. However, the white is often not dominant over the entire body, resulting in splotches, gray areas, or any number of white or gray patterns. No two white chins are ever the same due to the randomness of the white gene's effects. Whites have dark eyes and the ears have grey fur. The whites only exist in a heterozygous state, meaning there is only one white gene because the white gene carries a lethal factor. So if two white genes were present, the chinchilla unfortunately would not survive. That is why breeders never breed two white chinchillas because there is a 25% chance that the baby will not survive. Next there is the black velvet. This is a dominant mutation and visually shows itself as an animal with a dark mask on the face and over the back. Most of the body is black in colour and recedes down the sides into a crisp white belly. I think this mutation is such a beautiful and unique colour. Then we have the ebony colour, which is very similar to the black velvet. The ebony is a unique mutation and the colour phases of light, medium, dark can be used to describe it. As you can probably guess, in lighter mutations the chinchilla won't be as dark and vice versa. The ebony mutation causes a wraparound effect on a chinchilla, causing the body colour to wrap around the belly. 
A chinchilla with just a small amount of ebony influence may have a white belly with just a bit of grey tipping, while one with more influence will have a dark grey belly, which is the same colour as the rest of the body. Within the ebonies, there are also extra dark ebonies. These are solid black chinchillas, resulting in the increased number of ebony genes which they have. They are basically pitch black from head to toe. So far we have talked about dominant genes, so next we're going to talk about a recessive gene, the violet chinchilla. The violet mutation is recessive, meaning a chin must be homozygous by having two violet genes in order to exhibit the violet colour visually. A chin with just one violet gene will look the same like the standard grey and can be called a violet carrier. The violet is a light violet grey colour and has a white belly. You might have seen this famous image of a chinchilla on the internet. So this chinchilla is a violet chinchilla. Next, also with a recessive gene, is the sapphire colour. At first glance, sapphires may appear similar to the violet chinchillas, but they have a blue hue to their fur and pink ears. The sapphire mutation means the chin must have two sapphire genes in order to be sapphire in appearance. However, the sapphires sometimes can be weaker animals and careful breeding must be done when working with this mutation. Finally, probably one of the rarest mutations is the gold bar. The recessive gene was only discovered in 1995. Adults exhibit a champagne or gold colour, and they have dark pink eyes. Now this colour is very uncommon and probably comes at a high price too. There are probably a lot more different colours out there, but these are the most common colours that you will see. I hope you found this video interesting and please smash the like button down below. I post videos every Sunday, so if you're interested, feel free to subscribe down below as well. And thank you so much for watching until the end, and I will see you very very soon with a brand new video. Bye!